What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and we're finally to the point I've been waiting for a couple weeks uh, to get to and it is the unboxing of the new Holly Terminator X system. Stick around. everybody welcome back to the garage and as always i want to thank all the new subscribers out there thank everybody that's doing the comments throwing the likes out there watching the videos sharing it remember you can always share uh, our youtube homepage just by going to www.tuning101.com and if you are new to the channel i suggest you go and check out the playlist there's a lot of tuning content out there I gotta say there's probably 75 plus videos specifically on tuning, specific platform videos, quick tuning tips, things like that. I'll throw a link up in the corner over here to the general tuning playlist that you guys can go check out. That being said, today we are unboxing the Terminator X. This is the LS1 slash LS6 kit. And there's a whole bunch of auxiliary harnesses I've got over here. And we'll get into those as we need to. There's a specific reason to have all these auxiliary harnesses. That's because they don't make this thing for a uh, North Star. If you can imagine that, why wouldn't they make it? Oh, come on now, nobody makes anything for a North Star. But that being said, whenever it came down to selecting a Terminator X, I ended up going with the LS6 variant because the injectors are the same. So those are uh, eight plugs that are already built into the harness that I don't have to redo. All these other harnesses down here are specifically uh, to adapt sensors that are already on the car. Uh, so there is, uh, these are for the ignition, so these are going to go to our two ignition banks. And so we're basically going to cut off the connectors that are on there now, put these on there, which are the LS6 style that were made up to this harness. Uh, then we've got a uh, throttle because it uses the six pin style throttle. And then we've got the old uh, style connectors on here. Actually, that's probably backwards. I'm guessing that we'll be connecting these into the harness and then rewiring this one into our harness connector, our, our drive-by-wall throttle connector, which we have right here. So we can adapt that over. Uh, we've got a crankshaft sensor extension in case I need it, can work for the camshaft also, just in case. And then we've got the knock sensor conversion to go from two wires down to single wire style knock sensors because the harness in here is gonna be a single wire. That all being said, let's go ahead, let's open this thing up. I've got the overhead camera here so you guys can kind of follow along. And this is a big box, big box. A lot of stuff in here. We've got the standard manual, a decal as usual because in this world you can't send anything out without a decal. We will get back to this whenever we do the install. That's not happening for a couple more days. I've still got to get the uh, battery uh, relocated and clean up a couple other things. I've been working on the harness uh, but I should have brought my pocket knife over here. Uh, this is going to tear open just perfectly fine. And this should just be the ECU itself. No, this is the drive-by-wire throttle harness. Okay, so I did get the drive-by-wire set up. This does have the connectors like I thought that it would have on there. Okay, so I see what it is. One of them is the uh, pedal connector, so this will go in. The pedals are basically the same on almost all GM platforms except for some of the trucks maybe. So that's perfectly fine. Then we have the actual control for the uh, throttle body. So we'll set that aside. Now we have the main harness. This is the LS6. Man, this is a bundle of wires. Tell you what, I'm going to set this down. <laughs> We're going to pull this beast out, take a look at what we got here. We've got TPS, uh, which that is like the pressure sensor style. I didn't know that the TPS would be a pressure sensor style. Uh, idle air control, uh, coolant temp sensor, manifold air temp. Then, of course, we got any injectors and the ignition. There we go. So that'll go on there like so for the ignition leads, fuel pump relay, and then keep that in mind. Manifold air pressure sensors, standard GM style. 
Then we've got the crank, which is nice and already heat shielded. Hopefully this is long enough because our crank is underneath the intake manifold, so that will help. Then, as I said, we've got the knock sensor, which is the single wire style knock sensor. So we'll use this adapter. Helps if I plug it in the right direction, like so. So now we can take two, two wire knock sensors, which we already have, plug those into the single wire style knock sensors. Cam sensor uh, should work with the 4.4 liter, the XLR V cam sensors, which I have those available. And see what else we got. The other side of the ignition, the wideband sensor, which comes with this kit. That's basically it. A lot more oil. Uh, that's going to be oil pressure, I'm guessing. Man, it's quite the harness. Quite the harness. I'll be, in, I'll be excited to lay this thing out. And then here's our connectors for the ECU itself. So pretty straightforward. You've got uh, some flying leads, as I said. This green wire here is for your fuel pump to turn it on. Uh, I'll have to double check. This might be the lead that comes back to the fuel pump relay here, and then this might be the main power lead that goes to the ECM. I'll have to dive into the manual to figure all that out. Let's see what else we got here. <clears throat> Mm -mm -mm. This looks like a main power harness because it's red and black and it's heavy gauged with a fuse on top of it. 40 amp fuse. That might make itself more apparent here in a bit. We have got the wideband O2 sensor, uh, LSU 4.9, pretty straightforward. Let's put that right there. We've got the injector pigtails with the EV6. This part, if you end up going to a different style injector, the nice thing about it is this plug on the back side of the injector pigtail is gonna be uh, universal to the harness. That's the way they make it a little bit easier on themselves to be able to swap through all the different injectors throughout the different years on this. So somewhere on this thing, there is an injector plug, but we'll worry about, oh, there it is right there. So it just plugs in like that. Then we've got two injector leads to go out directly onto our injectors. This is going to be the optional harness. So these are DOs, uh, DIs, digital outputs, digital inputs, analogs, pulse width, modulation. So you've got eight total. I believe you got four in, four out, and some of them are user selectable. I'm not sure if all of them are user selectable or not. We'll get into that, especially whenever we end up throwing nitrous on this because we will be using the nitrous program that is within the ECM. And what have we got here? Once again, a little harness, no clue what it does. I'm sure we'll figure it out. And I got the unit that does not have the touch, touch screen display. It saves you about 250, 300 bucks around there. And instead it comes with the USB adapter to run the software, which I've got a video on the Terminator X software. I'll throw a link up in the corner for that one for kind of setting up the base tune. There will be more videos on that very soon as we get into actually programming everything. Uh, then we've got a, an O2 bung to weld on if we want to, which we're not going to need to. And then some, looks like some vacuum nipples of some sort on there. And then of course, we have the unit itself. Hopefully I can open this up without a knife. There we go. Open sesame. Oh, helps if you open it the right direction. Nice bubble wrapping on here and look at this beauty. Okay. There she is with the built-in map sensor, which we will not be using. Okay, that one harness is the power harness in. So this is the power harness. Plugs in here to our main unit. This one, I believe you trigger directly off the battery, and then you should have a ignition signal off of one of these other wires in here. Pretty straightforward, pretty nice package. I wanna say it was $900 for the LS1, LS6 package without the display on there. Uh, we've got 
Another $40 in auxiliary harnesses. I'm a little bit worried that I'm gonna to have to figure out something else on my th throttle body. It should work because all of the stuff is the same, but I might have to get a different harness or I have the factory harness. The whole purpose of doing these jumper harnesses like this is so I do not have to hack up the factory or the uh, Holly's harness because I wanna keep this thing intact for whenever we go in and do an, uh, an engine swap. If we do an LS swap of some sort, I would like to keep this thing in pieces as much as possible. And, uh, and a lot of these uh, adapter harnesses will carry over, specifically things like the uh, knock sensors, uh, you know, the injections will already work, and then hopefully our ignition sensor, our, our ignition harnesses, you know, we can use a standard ignition harness with an LS style uh, coil packs. So that's basically it. Not a whole lot to it. We'll see how easy this thing lays out in a future video, how easy it is to get to all of the sensor locations because they're a little bit different on the North Star, obviously. Uh, but a lot of them, we should be able to stretch this thing out, make it work. Uh, a couple of them I'm worried about is maybe the uh, oil pressure and the coolant pressure because, well, actually not coolant pressure, but coolant temperature uh, because the coolant temperature is on the back side of the block. Uh, the oil pressure is on the driver's side. And then there's another one that's on the passenger side. I can't remember which one that one is. So, uh, and then we'll have to figure out, as I said, how to make the throttle position and the IAC end up working with this. I'll have to do some more research on that to figure out what's going on there. But that's it in a nutshell. Stick around as we uh, keep on progressing on Project Country Club. I've got to, as I said, get the uh, battery relocated to the back. I'll be doing a video on that. May come out before this one, in fact. I don't know yet. And then we will also have another video here soon about doing the... Uh, transmission controller since we're doing a standalone transmission controller. So uh, short but sweet, ABT, always be tuning.